All right, welcome back to another episode of Mad English TV. In this lesson, we're going to talk about something I call trap questions on the CELPIP exam. Trap questions. Now, I don't think I've made a lesson on this topic specifically, but this is really important. Okay, so if you're studying for the CELPIP exam, I want you to pay close attention to what I'm going to tell you in, uh, in this lesson because it's... You know, it's something that maybe you've never thought about before. Okay, so what do I mean by trap questions? Well, these are questions that you'll see on the speaking and writing parts of the exam. And the trap is that the CELPIP people want you to use a specific word, but they won't tell you that word in the question. Okay, so they, they, they're trying to make you use a specific word, but they don't tell you that. So they, they want to test you. They just want you to know what that word is. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. Okay, in the mail, you received an advertisement about the opening of a new department store. The advertisement said that they have many items uh, at special low prices. However, when you went to the store, you could not find the items. So what's going on here? So they're using some, some words that are not the words they want you to use. Okay, so they're, they're trying to get you to use some specific words, but they're not telling you those words here in the question. Okay, can you think of what those words are? Well, I can think of some. Uh, look at this, advertisement in the mail. You know, we don't say that in English. You know, if a, if a company sends you something, right, listing their products or telling you some information, you know, come to our store, we're having a sale. You know, what's that called? That's called a flyer. Okay, you can spell the word flyer like this or like this. It's your choice. Personally, I like to spell it with a Y because I think it looks better. Okay, so that's the word they're trying to make you say. They, they want you to know the word flyer. Very often stores like Canadian Tire, you know, send out flyers. Okay, this is an example of a department store. A department store is, uh, is a big store that has different departments. In it okay so for example if you go to Canadian Tire you'll find a gardening department where you can buy some plants you'll find an automotive department where you can buy some you know some stuff for your car you'll find uh, a fishing and camping department where you can go buy some camping gear before you go camping here in Canada There's so many nice camping spots here in Canada okay so this is called a department store and very often department stores send out flyers Okay, they want, to, they want you to come into the store and buy stuff. Okay, so remember the word flyer. Now, let's take a look at the question again. Okay, it's talking about the store opening, right? That's important. And uh, they have some special low-priced items. Okay, so the store is opening for the first time. What's that called? Okay, that's called a grand opening sale. Okay, so look at these words. These are the ways they described it in the question. They said opening of a department store, special low prices. But, you know, that's not how we would describe it in English. Okay, native English speakers wouldn't use that. Native English speakers would call it a grand opening sale. Okay, so you need to know that. The CELPIP people are trying to test you to see if you know this word. Okay, grand opening sale and flyer. Okay, so if it's, uh, if it's an example, like let's say it's a writing question, you could, uh, you could say this, Dear Manager, yesterday I received a flyer in the mail regarding your grand opening sale. Okay, that would be for writing. Now, if it's for speaking, you could say, Hi, my name is Mark. I'm calling in regards to the grand opening sale you had yesterday. Okay, I'm, I'm disappointed because I was looking for, you know, the products you had on your flyer, but I couldn't find those products. So I just don't think it's right that you advertise for a grand opening sale and you don't have any of the products on your flyer. Okay, so you could say something like that. Okay, so grand opening sale. Okay, let's take a look at another example of a question here. Your community center is surveying your opinion on a new event happening every Saturday in the park near your home. There are two events being considered. One suggestion is a vegetable and fruit market. The other suggestion is a secondhand furniture and appliance market. Okay, so what's going on here? There are two words that they're trying to make you say. Okay, we have two markets, two kinds of markets. Now, look how they're described. 
vegetable and fruit market, and secondhand furniture and appliance market. That's a bit strange, isn't it? We have words for these kinds of markets in English. Do you know the words? Well, a fruit and vegetable market is called a farmer's market. Okay, a farmer's market. Now remember, with this word farmer, the apostrophe needs to come after the S, not before the S. If it's before the S, that means one farmer. Okay, but we're not talking about one farmer. We're talking about a lot of farmers who can come to this place and sell their stuff. Now, a secondhand market is called a flea market. A flea market. Okay, so the Selpit people are trying to make you say these two words, but they're not telling you these words in the question. Okay, so that's why it's a trap. It's like a, it's like a trick question. Okay, so I just want you to think about this. Okay, when you, when you see, when you're studying for Selpip, when, you, when you're looking at a question, try to figure out the hidden word, okay? Try to think, hmm, wh which word are they not saying that I'm supposed to say? Okay, now if you don't know, then uh, don't worry about it. Don't, don't waste time, you know, don't fret. Just try your best and forget the rest. Just try to use the words you do know and, and don't worry, don't waste time worrying about the words that you don't know. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, an example here from my speaking book, okay? This is one of the questions in my speaking book. Now, what do you think is the most important word in this question? I wanna test you guys, I wanna trap you, okay? So what do you think? Just take a look at this picture, and uh, you know, in this picture you're supposed to describe the scene. Okay, so how would you start describing this scene? What would be the first thing you say Okay, what, what would be the first word that, that you're thinking of when you, when you look at this picture? Well, I'll tell you the first word that comes to my mind, desert island, okay? Or you could say tropical island, but I think you would get a higher score if you said desert island because uh, I think that's how native English speakers would describe it. Okay, so when I think of that picture, I think desert island. A desert island is just a small tropical island, usually with, you know, some sandy beaches, some palm trees, you know, maybe some tropical you know, maybe some monkeys, some parrots, that kind of stuff, okay? So that's a desert island. That, that's, that's the most important word. So when you start describing this picture, you could say something like, uh, okay, so in this picture, I see a desert island. And then you could go on to talk about, you know, the stuff on the land and the stuff in the water. And, uh, and that would be great. Hey guys, I have so many of these specific vocabulary words in my books. So uh, if you wanna check out my books, you can just go to my website. I'll put the link to my website right down there in the description. Uh, I think you'll find my books really helpful. And I just wanna say thank you so much for, for all of you who have used my books. I really appreciate your support. Okay, so let's do some homework. All right, I got a question for you. Your extended family gets together every year. Okay, so if the question talks about this, your extended family getting together, you know, your grandma, your grandpa, your uncles, your aunts, your cousins all to get together every year, or maybe, you know, a few times a year, what's that called in English? Hmm, there's a specific word. Okay, so if you see this on the CELPIP exam, you know, they don't want you to say extended family, uh, you know, like our, our whole extended family got together. No, there's a, there's a word for that, okay, in English. So what is that word? I'm not gonna tell you, I wanna test you, okay? So let me know down in the comments. Hey, hope you guys are having a great day wherever you are, and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.